Home Assistant version 2020.12. So today I thought I'd talk just a minute about the new versioning system in Home Assistant and a little bit about what's in version 2020.12. At the conference, they announced a new numbering scheme. The numbering scheme is going to be the year, the month, and then there will be a version after that. So this could be 2020.12.1. So everyone was super hyped about version 1.0. Well, 1.0 beta is still out there or was out there. But as was discussed at the conference, it makes a lot more sense in numbering to uh, do it this way. So that is what Home Assistant has chosen to do. So we're, they're going to use calendaring version, year, month, and patch number. Uh, the patch number indicates a bug fix release. So the release schedule is also changing. Home Assistant Core is going to be released the first Wednesday of every month. So there'll be one release a month and then subsequent uh, bug fixes and patches in between that. When you go to supervisor and you look here and you see update available and it has this strange number that you're not used to seeing, well, that's why. Uh, I'm currently on version 118.5 and I will be moving to version 2020.12.0. There's a couple of big things that I'd like to talk about in version 2020 and these were talked about at the conference. One of the biggest things is blueprints. This is a huge new major feature in, in Home Assistant. And what Blueprints allow you to do is a pre, it's, like, it's a pre-created automation, has user settable options, and this allows you to separate the logic and the inputs of the automation. Um, it's not as complicated as it sounds. So um, you can take these Blueprints and there's gonna be a Blueprint store on Home Assistant that allows you to share these Blueprints and also download these Blueprints. And these will give you the ability to share your work and also be able to take other people's work and bring it into your system. So we have this what's called Blueprint Exchange Forum category under Home Assistant. And this is, there's some already in here, uh, quite a few actually now. So these are blueprints that have been created by others and they're now going to be included in Home Assistant for you to import yourself. And you can contribute your automations to this blueprint exchange. So um, won't go into the details I'm doing that. Later on, we'll show a video on how we actually use the blueprints. Um, but that's a cool thing that they've added, a really big thing. Uh, we've got some new voices for those that use, not, use Nabucasa. And let me take a moment to plug Nabucasa. I don't get supported by Nabucasa. I'm not sponsored by them. I do use Nabucasa. And one of the things that people may not realize is that Nabucasa, when you pay the $5 monthly fee or whatever it is for your for your Nabucasa subscription, that goes directly to supporting the Home Assistant community, Home Assistant um, staff, if you will, not necessarily staff, but basically it helps Home Assistant develop. They have a, a number of full-time developers that work on Home Assistant, and those are directly supported by your subscription to Nabucasa. So if you're not using Nabucasa, I would recommend doing it. So um, support it. It's awesome. I've never had any issues with it. Uh, and it just does what it's supposed to. And one of the things you're going to get, number one, is you're going to get the ability to do your um, your smart speaker integrations very easily. You attach your smart speaker to Nabucasa through Home Assistant Cloud. And now you can start controlling your devices. So I made a video on that. Check that out. Um, so that's one benefit. And now with this new version, we have the neural voices for Nabucasa. And so what that means is there's now um, different languages for text to speech offered through Nabucasa. Um, and then a lot of different voices. Um, so uh, whenever you automatically enable or it's automatically enabled when you sign in your Nabucasa cloud account, uh, and you can call up using the TTS cloud say, which I do uh, with my Google devices. And then of course you can set things like um, options, gender, and then language, and then it will talk in those languages. So um, that's gonna be kind of fun to play with. So you can set areas for entities under a device, not just the device. You can also do this with helpers. Um, so if a device doesn't have an entity, then you can set that in an area as well. So that's kind of a cool thing. 
Um, you can disable devices temporarily. Uh, a good example they use on their website here is um, Christmas stuff. If you turn things on and off for Christmas and then the season's over, you can disable those. And then whenever you bring them back out next year, you can re-enable that entity and you're ready to go or device. And then just some other noteworthy changes. Um, you can read through all of these um, noteworthy changes. One of the big ones for me personally is the Nest integration now supports camera and doorbell events, uh, thanks to Alan Porter. So make sure that you, if you're not doing the Nest integration, oh my gosh, there's so much information out there now on the Nest integration. It is not easy, but we've worked hard to, uh, or I've worked hard to build some videos for that. I've answered a lot of questions. It's probably my number one um, item for discussion is the Nest integration, but that's out there. Um, you can now, uh, reload uh, CanX YAML configurations without reloading the Home Assistant core. Um, and then um, what else we have here? I, I did hear that drag and drop is available. It may not necessarily be specific to version 2020-12, but it is available under the UI. You can now modify things with drag and drop. Uh, we got some new integrations here, Fire Service Rota, Cooler Sky, Motion Blinds, SRP Energy, and Twinkly. Twinkly is a big one for a lot of people who use the Twinkly lighting in, uh, on their holiday stuff. Uh, and now you can control that through Home Assistant. Uh, we've got some new um, in a, new platforms under HomeKit. You have the cameras. Um, and then e Montemarie has added support for fans and covers in the Tasmoda integration. And then, of course, MQTT has added support for scenes. You can read all of the details on the homeassistant.io page under the release notes for 2012. Uh, if you use Aurora or Recollect Waste, those are now integrations directly available through the UI. And of course, always, 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 always make sure that you look at breaking changes. Um, these specific things in here, if you use any of them, make sure that you read through here uh, because when you upgrade, it may break something that you're running. Uh, for example, uptime, um, sensors are using absolute time values and not relative time values. Um, the uptime integration is one that was left over for absolute versus um, relative times. So they have changed that to follow the new, the new um, time that they're using. And um, with that, the side effect is unit of measurement option is now deprecated and can be removed. Anyway, so make sure always that you read through these uh, breaking changes because I know a lot of people have been bit by the, the upgrade where the, something in there they didn't read about breaking changes and it, and it blew something up. Uh, salt fiber box, UB router, and this one, Yesms, Yes SMS, is all going away. So those are being pulled out. Um, and you can read about all of it. Um, on this page. So I just want to give you a quick overview on just what was going on in Home Assistant 2020.12 and have, helping you understand if you didn't go to the conference why all of a sudden you're seeing this versioning number. Um, jump in there, do the upgrade, make sure you read breaking changes first and anything that might apply to your configuration. As always, comments down below if you feel like you want to support me. I've got some links for Kofi and, and uh, Patreon below as well. And jump in my Discord and we will see you on the next one.